Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so now and sign up for notifications for future video uploads. All right, today's lesson is on geometric sequences. Today, your objectives are to identify a geometric sequence, you will extend and graph geometric sequences, and you will write geometric sequences as functions. So what I want you thinking about today as I go through the lesson is how can you use a geometric sequence to describe a pattern? In a geometric sequence, the ratio between pairs of consecutive terms is the same. We call this ratio the common ratio, and we refer to it as the algebraic variable r. Each term is found by multiplying the previous term by the common ratio. So by this point in Algebra 1, you should have been, should be familiar with the arithmetic sequence, which has a common difference. So you repeatedly add the same number value to get to the next term. In a geometric sequence, it's a ratio. So there's a common factor that you're multiplying one term to get to the next consecutive term. We get this common ratio. You can determine whether or not a sequence is a geometric sequence by taking any term and dividing it by its previous term. And if you do this to several terms and you get the same common factor, that's what we call the common ratio, and that factor is what we call R. So in this sequence, 8, 24, 72, 216, we're going to use this idea of the common ratio. We're going to take 24 and divide it by the previous term, 8, and we get 3. Notice that if we do 8 multiplied by 3, we get 24. 24 multiplied by 3 gives you 72, and 72 times 3 is 216. If you're not confident, you can check a second common ratio. So if we look at 72 and divide it by the previous term, the common ratio needs to be the same, and it is. So we know that that was a geometric sequence with a common ratio of 3. So here are two sequences. I would like you to decide whether each of the sequences is an arithmetic sequence, a geometric sequence, or neither, and be able to explain your reasoning as to why. Please pause, look them over, and come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So when we look at the first sequence, I'm going to take the second term, 60, and divide it by the previous term, and I get 1 half. Then if you look at 30 and divide it by the previous term, 60, you also get 1 half. So then you can look and say, multiply by 1 half, multiply by 1 half, multiply by 1 half. So since the sequence has a common ratio of 1 half, it's a geometric sequence. Now, let's look at the second sequence. I'm going to take 6 and divide it by 2, and I get a common ratio of 3. But is it common? It's a ratio, but is it a common ratio? Let's check another one. 11 divided by its previous term is not 3. Therefore, it's not a geometric sequence. Let's check to see if it's an arithmetic sequence. So previously, you should have learned that you're looking for the same factor to be added repeatedly. 2 plus 4 is 6, but 6 plus 5 is 11, and then this is plus 6. So this does not have a common difference, and therefore is not an arithmetic sequence. So I can conclude that because it doesn't have a common ratio or a common difference, it's neither. So. Now, you're being told that these two sequences are geometric sequences, and they want you to use the idea of a common ratio to write the next three terms of each of the geometric sequences. Please pause and come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So first I'm going to find the common ratio, and since it's a ge geometric sequence, I only have to do one. So 6 divided by the previous term is 3. You could also eyeball this and see that it's multiplied by 2, so the common ratio is 2. So 24 times 2, 48 times 2, 96 times 2. There are the next three terms of this geometric sequence. On the second one, our common ratio, negative 16 divided by the previous term, results negative 1 fourth. 
So now we're going to start here and multiply by negative one-fourth. Negative one times negative one-fourth is one-fourth. One-fourth times negative one-fourth is negative one-sixteenth. And negative one-sixteenth times negative four is positive one-sixty-fourth. Now let's talk about a ge geometric sequence and graph it. So hopefully you've graphed an arithmetic sequence in your past. I want you to graph this geometric sequence and I want you to identify whether or not it's a continuous or a discrete function. And I want to know what you notice about the graph. What observations do you make? So remember, this is term one, term two, term three, term four, term five. So when you're graphing it as an ordered pair, this first term would be the ordered pair one, 32, two, 16. Okay, go ahead and graph, make your observations, come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So we're going to graph the first term. Term 1 is, has a value of 32. Term 2, a value of 16. Term 3, a value of 8. Term 4, a value of 4. And term 5, a value of 2. Now, this is a discrete function because you do not have anything. You won't want to connect these points because you don't have a term one and a half or two and one third. So these are discrete points on this function, but they don't have rational values. So we don't want to connect. So now we want to talk about what we notice about the graph. I hope you noticed that this is in the form of an exponential function, that it's going to form a curve and it's just going to continually get smaller, but never get so small that it crosses the x axis. So the points form an exponential curve. So let's talk about the equation for a geometric sequence. Now that we've looked at the graph and we've discovered that it follows the exponential curve, we can use what we know about our common ratio. So our common ratio is going to be our base, and then we have our initial factor being your first term. So we're going to take the first term, and how many times do we multiply it by the common ratio? to get a specific term. So this is any term n, n being the term number, is equal to the first term multiplied by the common ratio n minus one times. So the exponent is n minus one. And that tells you how many times you need to do it. So think of those little jumps as you're going. So you have a starting point, and then you're gonna take one less jump than the term number you need to get there. So you start at one. So for example, if I was going to one to three, that's two jumps. So if I want term three, I have to take one less jump than the term number I need. All right, let's go ahead and use this. I want you to find the nth term. I want you to write the equation for the finding any term n of the sequence. I'm giving you the formula. And then I want you to use the equation you write to find the tenth term of the sequence. Please pause, come back, and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So we're going to start out writing our sequence, our formula. First, I need the common ratio. 12 divided by the previous term is 6. We know it's a geometric sequence, so we don't need to keep going. But if we did, we'd see that it's repeatedly a factor of 6. So any term n is found by starting with our initial term. Our first term is 2. Our common ratio is 6. And our exponent is going to be n minus 1. Now we're going to use this to find the 10th term. So I'm going to replace n with 10. So this represents the 10th term. And here's the 10th in for the exponent. So the first thing you want to do, 10 minus 1 is 9. 6 to the 9th would be our next part of evaluating this, which is 10,077,696 multiplied by 2, giving you the 10th term is 20,155,392. All right, try this one. Write the equation to find the nth term, and then use that to find the seventh term of the sequence. Pause, come back when you're ready. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So first, there's our formula we're gonna use, and we're gonna identify the common ratio. Negative 5 divided by the previous term gives us negative 5. So you can see we're repeatedly multiplying by a factor or a common ratio of negative 5. So to write our function, our 
term we're looking for, A, N, N being the term number we're looking for, our first term, our common ratio, and our exponent is going to be the term we're looking for, subtract 1. So now we're going to replace N with 7 because we're looking for the 7th term. So the first thing you want to do is 7 subtract 1, and we know that we have an exponent of 6. Seeing as our starting term was 1, we know that anything multiplied by 1 is itself, so we can drop that. And negative 5 to the 6th power is going to be positive because I have an even exponent, 15,625. That's our lesson on geometric sequences today. I hope you feel like you've got a good handle on geometric sequences and that you'll subscribe and come back to hear more. Have a nice day.